Okay, one more lecture on muscles of the body. We're going to talk about muscles of the lower leg. So the rear end, the thigh, and the lower leg is what we're going to cover. As with every other lecture, we're going to talk about origin, insertion, and function. So the first one we'll talk about is the gluteus maximus. Kids love to talk about their glutes. So this is the gluteus maximus here. It has quite a long origin. Notice that pinkish line there. So that's the connective tissue. Um, so you can see this is a pretty large muscle covering basically your hip and butt. So um, the origin is the posterior crest of the ilium. So the crest, remember, is is what you typically think of as your hips. It's the ridge. And then you can see that it continues through the sacrum and all the way down to the coccyx. Then it starts over here on the greater decanter of the femur. So this has, notice the fibers, kind of a diagonal shape fiber direction. So when we pull that insertion toward the origin, what does it cause to happen? So a couple things. One, because it's pulling from the backside, it's going to pull your leg back. So it's extending the hip past the 180 degrees. And then the other thing is because it, of that diagonal, when it pulls this hip, it... When it pulls the hip, it rolls it around, so it rotates it laterally towards the outside. So you have a gluteus maximus, medius, and a minimus, and we're just going to talk about the maximus and medius in this lecture. So here is the medius. It's a little bit superior to the maximus, and notice it doesn't have quite the medial or origin. Um, so the lateral surface of the ilium, so here's your hip, um, the whole pelvis, right? So here's your ilium, and it's originating there. Notice the diagonal movement, and notice where it's attaching right here on the top of the femur. So when it pulls diagonally, picture this. Picture that leg rolling out to the outside. So this causes an abduction of the femur, so pulls it away from the midline. It also because of that diagonal, it has a little rotation to it, so it laterally rotates the hip. So the gracilis is right here, this red line. A lot of kids might think of it as the groin. So it's kind of like the inseam of your jeans. I think that's what it looks like to me. So it starts on the pubis, it runs behind these muscles and inserts down here on the tibia underneath the condyle. So the condyle, remember, is a knuckle-like projection. So that's the proximal end of the tibia. So now I have to pull that line from the tibia to the center of my pelvic girdle. So what is that going to do? It's going to pull the leg to the midline. So that's an adduction. It causes the leg to come more towards the middle. At the same time, because it's pulling from a midpoint instead of a lateral point, it's going to cause a medial rotation of the thigh. So it rolls it inward. The other two, the glutes, rolled it out. So you can see a little bit of an antagonistic relationship. The sartorius, I love this muscle. It's diagonal here. Look at it wraps all the way around and comes by your knee. So this is causing, crossing the hip joint, so it's going to affect the hip. It crosses the knee joint, so it's going to affect the knee. So it originates on the iliac spine. It inserts down here on the tibia, kind of similar to the gracilis. Um, so when I pull this, I got to pull it all the way to the outer edge. So that's first going to bend this knee. It's going to cause that knee to go out. So picture my hip rolling out as well because I'm pulling from a lateral side. Everything's going in that direction. So picture yourself sitting cross-legged. So it's the muscle that allows my knee and hip to move up and out. It's hard for me to do these lectures without being able to show you with um, my legs because I like to do that. So that um, causes a flexion of the knee and hip and laterally um, rotates and abducts the thigh. So it moves it away from the midline. The bicep femoris is back here. I thought I put a different picture on. Um, the bicep femoris is one of three different muscles that are considered the hamstrings. So the hamstring is the posterior side of your thigh. And um, 
you can feel this muscle um, on the lateral edge. So here's the lateral edge. I had to orientate myself. Notice my glutes. That helps me figure out which is medial, which is lateral. So the diagonal takes me out. So you can feel your bicep femoris on the lateral portion behind your knee. It's like a big fat cord. And that's kind of cool to see. Um, so it is going to um, originate up here on your ischial tuberosity and on your femur. So that's your two points, bicep. And then it inserts down here. Notice it's crossing the knee joint and it's inserting um, on the tibia and the fibula. See both of them. Okay, so this is crossing your knee joint. Not so much your hip joint because it's coming from back your butt. Um, but it's, it's crossing your knee joint, so it's going to cause an action at your knee. So if I pull this towards the origin, so this is the back side of my leg, so it's going to bring my lower leg back. So basically that's bending your knee. That's a normal movement. So if you were to take your foot and try to touch the back of your rear, um, that would be a bicep femoris. The quadriceps, quadriceps, four points of origin. So we have four quads, one, two, three. And I'd have to cut away the, the middle one here in order to see the muscle underneath. So this is a very large, powerful muscle on the front of your thigh. It allows you to kick or stand. This one here is called the rectus femoris. So remember, rectus means straight up and down, and then femoris, it's over our femur. Then you have the vastus lateralis, it's on your lateral side, and the vastus medialis, it's on your medial side, right? So the inner thigh and the outer thigh. And the one underneath is called the intermedius, in between the two, intermedius. So here's those three muscles. We're looking at their origin. So the origin of the quadricep is up here on your iliac crest. Remember that was that hip bone. And then the origin of your vastus muscles is on the femur bone itself. So they don't cross the hip joint, but the rectus femoris does. So that rectus femoris is called a hip flexor because it's flexing the hip. When I pull this origin, pull this insertion toward the origin, it extends my leg, but at the same time, it's going to flex my thigh onto my hip. So it's like picking your knee up in the front. Um, so you can see these are all inserting around the knee and through the patellar tendon onto the tibia. So what happens? Here they are. They're going to allow me to straighten my knee. So it allows me to stand straight up. Or if I'm already standing, it might allow me to kick, like kick a soccer ball or kick a football or kick a table. I'm not sure what else you would kick. Okay, so tibialis anterior, this muscle in front. So if you think of your shin, and this, this would be the most prominent muscle on your shin. So it has a little bit of a diagonal. It starts lateral and it goes medial. So you can see it's starting on the tibia, thus tibialis, and it's on the front, so anterior. There's also tibialis posterior. We won't talk about that one. So it starts on the front of the tibia, goes diagonally to your first metatarsal bone. So remember, metatarsals, if this was my metatarsals, they're numbered from medial to lateral. So one, two, three, four, five. That makes that medial one my big toe. So this is going to pull my big toe toward the lateral portion of my shin, which is going to cause my foot to flex upward. That's called a dorsal flexion, bringing your toe back dorsal towards your nose, I like to think of it. So picking the toe up, that's a dorsal flexion. And because of this diagonal, it's also gonna cause an inversion of the feet. So if these are your feet, it pulls the palms of them more towards themselves. And then the gastrocnemius, this is what you typically think of as your calf, the big fat muscle on the back. Well, it's not fat, but you know what I mean? The big thick muscle in the back of your calf, originating on the back of the femur, 
going down through the Achilles tendon onto that calcaneus. So that was the heel bone we named in the last chapter. So when I pull this calcaneus toward my femur, what's that going to do? It's going to cause me to point my toe. So I'm going to stand on my toes like a ballerina. Um, so that's called a plantar flexion, putting your toes towards their bottom rather than toward the back. So these are antagonistic to the tibialis anterior, and they allow me to stand on my toes. Synergistic to that is the soleus. So the soleus is this sheet of muscle here that lies deep, using my language, deep to the gastrocnemius. So underneath the gastroc is this tibialis. So, so people who have really well-defined calves might have two V's. So the one on top is going to be the gastroc, and then there's a, another one that extends a little bit further out, and it goes further down, and that would be the soleus. So this is the V of the gastroc. This is the V of the soleus. You might notice they are both inserting via the Achilles tendon onto the calcaneus. So they have the same insertion point. They're pulling from a similar origin point. So what's that going to do? Draw your line up to the origin, and it pulls my toes downward. So it causes me, again, to plantar flex or point my toes. So just one thought to leave you with as I am done naming muscles of the legs. Of course, there's other muscles. Those are the ones we're going to name is I'm wondering if you've been doing your calf stretches correctly. So a lot of us push against a wall or a fence or something like this. And, a, and then there's a lot of us who, who bend our knee when we do it. Some of us are straight. Some of us put our toes up onto um, a curb or something like that. So if your leg is straight, you're stretching your gastrocnemius, the one on the outside, the superficial muscle. And if your knee is bent, you're stretching your soleus, the deeper muscle, the underlying. Or if your toe was up on the curve, that would be similar to this one. So, have you been stretching your calves correctly? It's a thought to leave you with. I hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later. Bye.